Hey, this is Mikey with an After Effects tutorial. In this video, I'm gonna talk about a brand new preset and expression I've come up with I call the sequencer. And what it does is things like this, or things like this, where it'll sequence an animation one after another. Waits till the first one is complete before it goes to the second one. So that's called the sequencer. I'm gonna show you how to do it coming up next. This tutorial is going to be a little bit different than my other ones. I'm not doing a complete finished look. I'm really talking about an expression and how to do expressions. Um, if you've never done expressions before, this might be a little bit complicated, but I think you'll still be able to handle it. Now, again, this is a preset. I've developed this in the preset. It's available for free download over on my site, cinemaspice.net. While you're there, go ahead and check out the rest of the store and the items, some really great stuff. But let's go ahead and just make this from scratch and then I'm gonna show you how the preset works. So let's just go ahead and hide that sequence layer and let's create a new null object. I'm gonna put all of the expression and the controls on this null object. So with that being said, I do need a control. So I'm gonna to come to, up to effect, expression controls, slider control. This first one, let's give it a name, completion. And then let's duplicate it two times. This first one we're going to rename amount. And this second one, we're going to name this just simply one. Now this one slider is where we're going to put our expression. So to do that, we come down into the timeline and we twirl down till we find where the slider is. And then we hold down option or alt on the keyboard, click on the stopwatch and it brings open this expressions dialog box and I can make this bigger. And let's just delete that. And so this is, it's a code, it's um, expressions kind of like JavaScript. Well, it, actually you can use JavaScript in here and write functions and all that kind of stuff. So if you're familiar with how JavaScript works, this will be very familiar to you. So first I need to write some variables. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use these sliders to feed data into the variables on this expression. So the first variable, will be called completion. So just write completion equals, and I'm gonna use this pick whip right there, and then grab, click, and drag it over to the slider, and it'll create um, the link to it. And then just end with a semicolon. Let's do the same thing for amount. Amount equals that one. Okay, that's the two sliders that I brought in. Now I need to be able to know the number or the index layer of these effects. So if we look at these effects, we've got completion, amount, and then one. So this is the third effect. And I need to know what number that is for this, the way this expression works. And so I'm gonna call this variable index L. And for this, I need to type in an expression. I can't just link to something. So it's this property, make sure property is capitalized, dot property group, Make sure group is capitalized. Parentheses one dot property index and make sure index is capitalized. And again, for this expression, I want this to actually equal zero. So this is one, two, three. So that's gonna output a three and for it to equal zero, I do a minus three and then now that equals zero. And then next I've got one more variable I want to create but it's not going to be bringing data from outside in it's going to be compiling these variables together. I'm gonna to call this a comp for amount completion equals completion times amount minus, I'll do parentheses 100 times index L. Close parentheses and a semicolon. So that is all of the variables. Now time to write the expression. So what this expression does is it's going to, as I slide this completion, this completion slider crossed from zero to 100, it's going to sequence these layers from zero to 100. So since there's only one layer, it'll actually just go from zero to 100 at the same time. If there's two layers, it would go from zero to 100 layer one first, and then zero to 100 layer two, all within this same um, length of this slider. If there's three layers, it would do three within that time. If there's four, four within that time, et cetera, et cetera. And so 
by sliding one slider, I can sequence an animation on one, two, three, all these different sliders, and I can easily connect uh, through expressions different elements in my After Effects composition to these sliders, and it's a really easy way to do that. So let's type in that expression, and it's two if-else statements into one. How an if-else statement works is if a certain situation is true, then it's going to output something else, output something else. So let's type if parentheses a comp is greater than 100, close parentheses. Let's go to the next line. And then in curly brackets, we're going to write 100 with a semicolon. Make sure it's a semicolon and not a colon. So if this equation is greater than 100, then just output 100. So what this is doing is it's capping it at 100, so the slider amount will never go over 100. Now we do an else, curly bracket, and then we're going to do another if statement. Instead of finishing off this equation, I want to ha add in one more if statement. So if a comp is less than 0, then in curly brackets, we're going to output 0. So it's going to cap it off between 0 and 100. We're not going to have any negative numbers, and none of them are going to be over 100. That's what it's doing. And then let's do one more else. So if it's in between 0 and 100, then just output a comp, semicolon, curly bracket. And since I've got two if else statements, I need to have one more curly bracket to close it off. And if I've done everything correctly, then when I click out of this box, it should not give me an error, which it looks like I did a good job. So I can go ahead and close this down. I don't need to look at this anymore. I've got the expression all done. So now what I can do is take this slider, duplicate it several times, and then let's see, one, two, three, four, five. I need to make sure with the amount, I need to put in the number five there. So that tells me how many sliders I have. And then as I slide across, you can see it's sequencing from 0 to 100. Let's go ahead and add some something to animate. So I'm going to bring in, let's just bring in a text layer. Let's call this scale. Let's bring this down. I don't need to scale it that much. I'm going to go ahead and hide this null object so I don't see the box right here on my screen. And I'm going to lock the controllers so I can see them. I'm going to make sure I've got five of them. And let's just move them wherever we want. And then I'm going to highlight all these, bring up the scale. And then I'm going to connect the scale to the sliders. And we just do an expression again. So Alt or Option, click on the stopwatch, and then pick whip the slider. I'm going to do that for all of these. And then as I slide this up, you can see they sequence one right after another. So it doesn't continue on to the next one until the first one's done. It's a really kind of a handy way of doing some animations. So say you have a ribbon that you want to animate across the screen, like a stylized flat ribbon that's got lots of different parts that you need to, them to animate one after another. This is a really handy way, really easy way of doing that. So that is the sequencer equation. Um, here it is right here. Again, it's down in the description below. Now let me talk to you about the preset I made. And this is for download. It's a free download over at cinemaspice.net. So you can go and check it out. I'm going to go ahead and just delete all of this that I've put onto this null object. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my preset. So here's the preset. And you can see there's the completion slider. There's not an amount slider because I have it built into the expression. It's a little bit more complicated than I want to get to in this basic um, tutorial but it's in the preset so you don't have to worry about it. It automatically counts how many layers you have. And then I have this overlap slider which will overlap the animations instead of having them one right after another, it's going to overlap them by a certain percentage. 
ease in and out for easy easing. And then of course this, you know, the one slider. So let's go ahead and make a quick, make a quick um, something to animate. So we've got three lines here. These are just shape layers. And I'm gonna come into the scale. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna come up into this, I'm gonna duplicate so I have three of them like I've done before. Grab the scale, go to the slider. But what I'm gonna do this time is instead of just scaling everything, I'm gonna just scale the X and leave the Y at a 100%. And what I can do is actually just copy this expression and go into my next scale paste it, and then change this from effect one to effect two, and then we're gonna do that on the next one as well. Okay, so let's take a look how this animates. So completion slider, set that to 100. Just how we've always done it before, you can see that it just goes one right after another. Now let's do some changes. So let's go to this ease in, ease out, and how it's set is at 50, there's no easing. So right in the middle, um, if I go over to the left, the in is on the left up in the name, it's gonna be easing in. If I go to the right, all the way to 100, it's gonna be easing out. So let's go over to the left, and you can see there's some easing on this. Let's go over to the right, and it's easing out. So what's neat about the way the eases work in this um, preset is it's not easing from this keyframe to that keyframe. So it's not doing the top one fast and then the middle one normal and the bottom one slow. It's doing each sequence, each layer has its own independent easing. So that's pretty smart the way that works. Now let's do the overlap. So right now, as I sc scroll across, it's completed before it starts on to the next one and the next one. But if I overlap this, say, let's go to 75%, then you can see there's gonna be start to be some overlap. And then I can keyframe this back down to zero. Let's take a look how that looks. Pretty cool. So that's the sequencer. A lot of fun stuff you can do with this. Here's another example I made. Um, just some boxes coming on. This one, some circles. So there's lots you can do with it. And really the sky's the limit is how many layers you can put in here. Um, I don't even know if After Effects does have a limit, but um, really you can put tons in here, probably way more than you'd ever need to. So that's the sequencer, go get it, it's free. Go to cinemaspice.net. There's a link in the description where you can go and download this. And again, while you're there, go check out the rest of the store. I've got more After Effects presets. There's some templates. There's lots of other free things as well. And there's some lens flares and backgrounds and bokeh and all sorts of great overlaying elements you can put on your footage. And of course, there's some great sound effects packs, uh, very popular sound effects packs. And uh, I hope you enjoy them. So please go download this preset, tell your friends, share it with others, and I want to get the word out about this um, preset called The Sequencer, and hopefully it can do some good in this world. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.